and, and truly the information that our powerhouse resource pros, Dan from Connections Marketing and Amanda from Amanda Heart Design and Stern Heart, are going to share with us is awesome because we've gone through it twice now and I learned a lot even though, you know, being a marketing person, I get to spend more time on things like Google Analytics. So without further ado, we always like to recognize our audience that are on the call so they can just say who they are. And so what I'm going to do so that you all don't feel like you're stepping on toes by uh, talking in, on, you know, at the same time as someone else, I'm going to say your name and then you can introduce yourself. And there will be time for Q&A at the end. So, uh, you know, for those of you who have Q&A, if you are going to bug out before the um, 8 o'clock, to 9 o'clock hours finished, you can send us an email um, or type a message in here and we'll get your question. So without further ado, Carolyn, can you just quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Hi guys, it's Carolyn Tracy, Carolyn Tracy Interiors. Uh, looking forward to the SEO. Excellent. Okay, great. And now I see Kristen, you're on? Yes. Hi, it's Kristen Tagon with Cadmium Interiors. Hi Kristen, good morning. Good morning. Great. And Cheryl, I see you're on. But she might not be on with her um, microphone yet, so we're going to give her a minute. Michael, Michael Castronova. Mike Castronova, BNY Mellon Wealth Management. Great, Michael. Great to have you. Boy, I heard the bond market was going nuts yesterday, and rates are like unbelievably low. I've been telling everybody they're not going up. <laughs> wow. That, that hasn't changed. Wow, everybody should be calling you after this if they need to refi, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know, if, uh, they, you know, I don't know. They can talk to you about that and other things. Okay, and then Nathan, good morning, Nathan. Good morning, uh, Nate Kipnis, Kipnis Architecture and Planning. H how you doing, Nate? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. How's your new place in Highland Park? Uh, good, really good. <laughs> good, I can't wait to, to see it. I, I know it's going to be... Um, you st because of the uh, period that it, the architecture is, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, um, and then we have Nancy. Hi, it's Nancy Jacobson. I'm with Kitchen Design Partners in Northbrook. Fantastic. Good morning, Nancy. We're looking forward to your smaller um, uh, Powerhouse Smart event in your showroom. Uh, not to, in a, I think it's in March. in March. Right. Thank you. Yes. And then Mark Benner is on. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Mark. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Just did uh, a couple of laps on cross-country skis this morning, so I'm feeling refreshed. Wow, that's fantastic. Good for you. Okay, terrific. And then I know there are probably another dozen or more people that are going to be joining us, but that's okay. We're going to get uh, we're going to get started with our agenda. Did I miss anyone other than our two powerhouse resource pros, our presenters today? If if I did, please step forward. Hello. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Suzanne with Chicago Luxury Beds. Mary Pat just stepped out, um, so I'm just going to introduce us on behalf of her. Fantastic, Suzanne. We're really happy to have you. Thank you again for hosting that great uh, real estate panel um, last year. That was fantastic. Yeah, our pleasure. Well, so anyone who wasn't there and might not know who we are, um, we sell luxury handmade all natural European mattresses and offer the very best in sleep. We also have custom down pillows, uh, down comforters, and Italian linen. Wonderful. I know you, your, your, your uh, products are absolutely unbelievable, and I know they, they, pay, they change people's lives. They really do. Sleep makes all the difference. <laughs> I, I know I need mine. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> um, Thank and then you. I you, oh, Tony, you just joined the call. Tony Callahan, or do you have your your microphone on yet, or not yet? Not yet. Carolyn, do you? I uh, mean, Cheryl, do you have your microphone on yet? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Cheryl Dogvilla, Cheryl D and Company Kitchens and Custom Cabinetry, and basically any type of interior remodeling is what we do. Okay, uh, fantastic, and you guys are just amazingly busy, so that is fabulous. Okay, um, Tony, have you got your microphone going there yet? Not yet, it looks like. So um, we're good to we're gonna we're gonna let our two um, 
resource pros. And first let me start with why did we pick this topic? As you know, we pick our education, and some of you I know need to cut out uh, a little early, but that's okay, you'll be able to hear the recorded version. But we pick topics that are really relevant to all of us you know, improving our business and growing. I mean, that's what we're all about. Obviously, we're about connecting each other, and that's why I want each of you to introduce yourselves. So we're going to have a little bit of Q&A at the end. But Google Analytics, and, and not all of us have are in the situation when we can sit in front of our computer for a long period of time every day because we're running our businesses. But Google Analytics is a powerful tool that we really want to be able to access, even if we only have a short period of time on a weekly basis. Because as we all know, um, our, our website and our online um, awareness is huge today. I mean, that's the best marketing tool we have. And in many cases, it's also the least expensive marketing tool we have. So um, uh, we selected our two resource pros, Dan and Amanda, because this is what they do every day. So I asked them to try to talk to our level, since we don't um, talk technical all the time. So without further ado, I'm going to let Dan, and then I'll let Amanda introduce herself, and then we'll get going here. So Dan, um, please introduce yourself. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Corvus with Connections Marketing. Um, started the business, as you can see on my screen, established 2009, so we're just coming over five years in the, into the uh, industry. We, we do a lot of search engine optimization. Um, we have a solid core of web developers, web designers. Um, social media marketing. We also do some, you know, offline media, but the, the bulk of our focus for what we do is is web-based. Um, so that's everything from what I just mentioned, you know, design, development, online marketing, and you know, the crux of it is, you know, today is is actually looking at the data that you know your website has. And we you know, capture this in Google Analytics. So that's the main focus of today's presentation. Fantastic, Dan. And you also just recently did our new website here at Powerhouse. That is correct. <laughs> okay, wonderful. We're really excited about it. And, you know, it's always a work in progress. We come up with new ideas to improve it every day. Yeah. So thank you for your patience. Okay, yeah. Amanda, um, please introduce yourself and get us started here this morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Amanda Hart of Amanda Hart Design. Um, we are a full-service graphic design and marketing business. Um, I have actually been in the graphic design world for over 14 years. Um, we provide a suite of marketing and design services for our clients, uh, including graphic design, marketing, and branding services. So that's anything from a logo that you would need, uh, printed marketing materials, websites, and social media is a big focus now. And um, I'm looking forward to talking to everybody about how to use Google Analytics and um, how to use it to really accomplish your business goals. So, okay, fantastic. So just so um, our audience knows here, our Powerhouse Smart members, um, we did some um, role playing here, and so we're, as you know, even though we're business oriented and we want to make sure we're prepared, we also know that both Amanda and Dan can speak very intelligently about our topics, so we'll go back and forth with them sharing insight. So with that, you want to take it away, Amanda and Dan, you want to put on the dashboard? Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so the first two things that I was going to talk about today were very important and basic parts of Google Analytics, and the first one is how to get Google Analytics. Um, it's simple to get Google Analytics. Really, all you have to do is go to google.com slash analytics and sign up for a new account. Uh, you can use an existing Gmail address, um, but Dan mentioned the other day, thanks for this, that you can use your own email address to sign up so that you don't have to have another email address if you don't want to. Uh, again, that's google.com slash analytics. Um, and basically, you'll go through the steps that they provide to you there to uh, get your account set up. And then you get a tracking code, which I would recommend giving to your, um, your web designer or your web developer to implement into your website because there's a few different ways of doing that. There's a little bit of um, code that you need to upload to your website. So I would recommend giving that to your web developer or your web designer and uh, getting started there. So then um, the first 
just kind of quick two parts of Google Analytics that are users and session. Um, and those are really important um, things to take note of. So you'll see right there there's users and sessions where he's got the mouse. And if you can't see this, then we'll just talk a little bit about what each one of them are. Um, a user is someone that is coming to your website, or it could be a crawler, which is kind of defined as a, as a robot that's kind of looking through your website. Um, and a session is a, a group of interactions that occurs on your website um, during a, a given time frame. So um, if a user is in, inactive for a while, if they have your website up on their screen for several hours, like I can't remember exactly the time frame, um, it, once they get active again, it will count them as another session. But that would be that would be quite a long time. Like if they left your website running overnight or something like that. Um, so basically, a session is a time frame, and I like to think of it as an experience the person is having with your website during a certain time. So Amanda, can I ask? So right now, whose Google Analytics are you on? Are we on PowerHouse? Correct. Yes, um, we are. Again? Yes, yeah, yes, we are. What everyone can see on the screen right now is um, the initial login dashboard for PowerHouse Smarts Analytics, actually. And when you log in, it gives you a tracking, or you can see this line graph, or this, this line chart here, of the past 30 days of data for the, the, the website. Okay, so um, Dan and Amanda, uh, we're using Powerhouse Smart as our example here. And so now, Dan, it, looking at this dashboard, is this the first thing that I would go to um, when I'm, you know, a business owner or a marketing person and I want to see how um, our online presence is doing? Correct, yeah. I mean, there's, there's different ways you can customize it. I kind of just leave the default view just because it's... It gives you the the full breadth of everything that you're going to see in terms of like a, a, a broad overview for the data. Um, but like I said, you can customize it for specific things to show up on these on this dashboard in, in terms of what they call widgets. But this is what you'll you would normally see if you just had straight out of the box logged in to your analytics dashboard. This is what this is the information you'd see. Oh. Okay, and so is is Google Analytics free, Dan? Uh, yes, there there is a paid version, but the free version is powerful enough for the common everyday user that this is really all you need. It's 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 a very powerful tool. Okay, so you went to the audience overview, and so what is this telling you? I mean, I mean, as far as good, bad, what do I need to improve? That kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. I mean, the site does get a decent amount of traffic. Um, you know, it's compartmentalized to this geographic location, but it does show a lot of inf good information, especially the fact that the average session duration, meaning that the amount of time the average user is spending on the site is, you know, over seven minutes, you know, it's seven minutes and 38 seconds. That's actually, that's, that's a, that's a high, high, high session duration. Okay. I, I agree with that. Good. good. High session duration. It is. Okay, great. And so, so Dan, why don't you go through kind of the reporting things and what you would look at, and then I know, Amanda, you're going to help us figure out how to improve our, um, uh, our session rates and our views and our SEOs. So go ahead, Dan. Great. Okay. So when you log in, again, like I said, you get the basic audience overview, um, but there's ways that you can really refine and see it you know, specific things about how people are looking or what people are doing on your website specifically. Um, you can, for instance, you can check out demographics, um, and we can do this that gives you an overview to show what your target audience is in terms of age you know, metrics. Um, so you see your, your, there's your target is highest uh, age is 55 to 64 years of age. Um, it breaks down male and female. Um, it's pretty interesting on how they can get all this information. Um, Basically, because when people are logged in, it, it kind of tracks trending and things like that to see, you know, what type of information people are able to, you know, gather from it. Um, obviously, age and gender are two big ones. Um, especially here too for interests. You know, we know what Powerhouse Smart's all about, and you know what kind of audience they attract. It'll show you know, what type of people are, or what these people that are, are looking at the site also are engaging in across the web as well. 
and you see home decor enthusiasts, uh, real estate, things of that nature, home and garden, um, a lot of things that are, you know, kind of the, the main focus of what, you know, Powerhouse Smart members are all about as well. That's very interesting, actually. Um, we can also break it down uh, geographically to show locations as to where people are actually coming to the site from. Um, obviously, the highest is going to be the United States, so if I were to click in the location, it'll show me the map of, of the you know, world, basically, and the hot spot being the United States. And as uh, Amanda pointed out about, about the robots that crawl the site, you see people like Russia or Brazil, you know, places that you wouldn't think the site is being looked at from. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are typically robots. But if you break it down into the United States, which is the highest uh, source of traffic to the website, you'll see more hotspots as to the most engagement and, you know, being, you know, based out of Illinois, uh, Powerhouse Smart gets the most traffic from there. Um, and then you can also break it down. It'll show the traffic coming from each, you know, from highest to lowest, you know, 565 viewer or, or visits from the site. Um, interesting question about that, Barb. Um, Barb asked if you can see who they are as to when these home decor or people like that who are visiting the site. Um, from a privacy standpoint, you really can't get that much information just because Google shields that information. They don't want to give away too much information about things like that. But that's an interesting question. But, Dan, if they are like at a large server, say, for example, a big company like an, a law firm or Baxter or Abbott, it will show where their server is. Is that correct? That is correct. And you can break it down a little bit further. So say, for instance, the most uh, traffic is coming straight from Chicago, you can really break it down into... Sorry, just trying to point it down a little bit more. Okay. Actually, well, yeah. yeah, the specific answer is yes. If, if you're coming from a place that does have a lot of, you know, an I, a dedicated IP address or something like that, like you said, for a specific business, yes, you can see all of that data, you know, from one specific area. That's spot on. Okay. So... If I if I'm a business owner and I'm looking and you're you you went first to the audience tab, um, and I was just going to quickly go to the audience tab on a weekly basis, you know, looking at all these different things. Are there any things that you would say, Dan? Boy, this is something really important that you should really look at, you know, to track and to be able to improve. Uh, definitely, the main the main focus would be bounce rate. Is, is you want to focus on a bounce rate when it comes to something like that. And as you can see, when I hover over what bounce rate is, um, and it gives you a specific definition straight from Google, uh, the percentage of single page visits. So that, that what that means is, is that if a user comes to the website, they only come to one page and they leave right away. That's something you want to work on increasing or actually decreasing the bounce rate. People do engage more with the website itself, so they're going to more than just one page on the site. So what is a good bounce rate to have? Um, well, this is pretty good. I mean, 44.54% excuse me, 44 is pretty good. Um, anything below 50 is good. Anything in the 40s is good. Anything below that is great. Sorry, somebody has their something going on that probably needs to mute. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm hearing a beep. Okay. It's a phone caller. Somebody's trying to call it. There you go. All right. Um, so, so, Dan, um, what other tabs, and what is a web, Webmaster Tools? We didn't really hear about that. Okay. So, in a different section of this, so on your left-hand dashboard here, there's all different, you know, options to see data. And one of them is acquisition. So, acquisition means how did this, how did, how did you acquire this person? How did you, how did this person come to the website? And there's typically four different ways people come to the website. That would be direct, meaning they typed in powerhousesmart.com. Referral, meaning they came from a third-party site like House or something. Anything that's not search-based or direct. Um, organic search, meaning they found you through a search engine. And then social, meaning they came through social media, which is, you know, all the rage now is social media. But 
what Wendy was referring to was webmaster tools. So organic search, if I were to click this link or this option, this channel will show me all the keywords that people found Powerhouse Smart in the past 30 days. Now, you'll see people typed in Powerhouse Smart, uh, variations of the website itself, and that's how they came there. We see this not provided, and Google kind of shields that information too because they're a little, they, they, they like to play it close to the vest. Um, but we can see there's 161 different ways people came to this site with different keyword combinations. It's not going to show up in Google Analytics. Now, another component of uh, tracking data is Google Webmaster Tools, and they kind of work in conjunction with, uh, with analytics as well. So you can upload a file to your website, which gives you access to what's called Webmaster Tools, and I have that open in another tab right here. This gives you a little more information about other metrics that aren't available in Google Analytics. So what I can see here is search queries. Once I have this installed, this is Google Webmaster Tools for Powerhouse Smart. This shows me a lot more options or a lot more data as to different keywords people have found the website and gotten to Powerhouse Smart through or at least made a search query about. So this gives us, you know, a much greater, you know, landscape to see these terms as well. So thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I think that's a huge golden nugget. Like when we do these, you know, one-hour webinars, you, you want to walk away with one good idea, and Webmaster Tools is, is free. Is that correct, uh, Dan? 100% free, yeah. As long as, it, I'm sorry, yeah. as long as you're, uh, you know, if, if you're privy to you know, or savvy enough to know how to upload, simply uploading an HTML file or verifying the site with your analytics even, or if your uh, developer wants to do it, it you know it takes maybe two minutes to do it. Okay, fantastic. I think that's really and, and as you can see, looking down below, um, you know some of our members' names are on here. You can see what you know is really helping bring interest and actually sharing the interest to Powerhouse Smart, which is great for all of you who might have on your website your affiliate partners or other aspects that, you know, are really part of your community or your world, such as Powerhouse Smart. So that's great. So um, I'm going to um, let you kind of finish up on what you're talking about, Dan, and I'm going to turn it over to Amanda for some information on, you know, the behavior. Okay, great. Great. All right, so just going back to this side dashboard here, um, it shows us the options that we have to see about you know the audience and how people are coming to the site. I, I focus mainly on on search traffic, just because that's the business I, I'm involved in. Um, there's other things you can see as well. Um, another cool one is uh, probably over the past year or so, uh, Google now offers a real time uh, function, so you can actually see in real time how people are are at at your site. So if I were to click on this overview, right now it's showing zero people are on. Powerhouse Smarts website. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to open up Internet Explorer and I'm just going to go directly to Powerhouse Smart. And let the site load. So there's Powerhouse Smart. There's Wendy. And now when I come here, it's it's showing one. So in real time, it's actually live tracking who's coming to the website and how. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, It'll show you, and it'll even it'll break it down. You can see, you know, now there's four people on the site, and it'll show, <laughs> it'll show a heat map where these people are coming at. And it's pretty cool. Um, it's a nice little feature. It'll show you if they're coming from the desktop. If I were to, you know, go for, to my iPhone, it would show up here as well, showing mobile. Um, and I guess that brings up another thing too. When you're looking at these this data, um, the audience again. Uh, it'll sh you can look at all these different types of things, these you know technology, behavior, geographic, which I already covered. Um, but if you were to come from the mobile, it'll show you or it'll show you what type of device. If you were coming from, let's say, over the past 30 days, you know you have all these visitors coming from the desktop, coming from mobile, coming from tablet, um, and it'll even break it down to, on a mobile structure, what actual device they're using. So you know, iPhone being, you know, one of the more popular devices, it'll show you that traffic as well. 
Okay. And then, Dan, I think you were going to talk a little bit about exit pages under the behavior. Oh, no, that was going to be Amanda. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yes. That's, that's one of, that's one of the, the, the areas that I feel is really important to take a look at in the behavior section. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. So, um, Dan, you went over the audience and you went over, um, so that was uh, uh, one of the first things you would look at. And then acquisition, how you've actually acquired those people and is it through search engine or is there a way to check keywords here? Is there a keywords um, aspect? Definitely. Definitely. So, again, in this acquisition tab, you know, we have these different channels. So, if I were to go into the channels tab, it'll give me again the four different channels, direct, referral, organic, or social. Um, and if I click through to the organic, which I was in earlier, this shows me uh, the overview of the keywords, which again entail, and this, this again, I guess interlaces again this not provided, which gives you a little bit more into the webmaster tools section. But it's, it's a powerful okay. tool as well. So if you want to do increase your, um, and I can, could you go show the rows and go to more rows to the right things? Yeah. Well, as you can see here over the past 30 days, there was only, well, for, yes. for, you know, for this data set, you can see one through seven, and it's only showing one through seven here. However, this not provided is the section that would expand into the Webmaster Tools section because there were a lot more not provided which show up in the Webmaster Tools section over the past three days as well. Right, and so for some of you, not on our this particular website example, it, there will be more numbers going down and if you want to expand the rows, you can go beyond seven and, and see if there's more data. There isn't on this particular example, but I'm sure there will be on your websites because I know in my past life when I'm looking at other builders websites and designers and landscape companies there's usually more more um, different keywords that are being used right correct yes yeah, that's correct that's correct and another thing that to keep in mind too is that Google's kind of moving towards um, more more of a security based because uh, we know we have the HTTP in our browsers once they're moving Google's moving more towards the HTTPS and that's a secure, more 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 secure. See how there's a little lock there. Wow. Uh, what that that's also kind of ties into why this not provided shows up so so much higher. You know, a couple of years back, it didn't. It, this didn't even exist, which kind of ticked off a lot of people in the SEO world because it locked you out of all that data. Now. Got it. Yeah. Right. Kind of forcing everybody to to really want to use webmaster tools. Correct. Great, great. Dan, that was an excellent overview. And as I might have said earlier, that there's so much information on Google Analytics um, members that they that Amanda and, and Dan could go on for an entire, you know, full day session. But we're just trying to get the 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 quick uh, golden nuggets or you know key items that we need to know for you know quickly assessing. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Amanda, and you're going to talk about behavior and how to get more business from your you know, online presence. Great, absolutely. Yeah, the behavior section is a really important one to take note of as well. Um, there's lots of different metrics that you can look at in that section. Um, obviously, the new versus returning uh, visitors is a great one to look at on your website. If you want so Dan, to can you move the mouse over or the um, arrow over to behavior, please? Yeah, you know what, Amanda, would you be okay if I gave you presenter, if I gave you the sure. mouse? Keyboard mouse? Okay, great. Another thing while he's getting that adjusted is he was talking about that HTTPS. Make sure that when you're online and you're doing anything that involves a purchase or something that you want to be secure, make sure you always check that. Make sure you see that HTTPS in the top of your screen. Great. That's great. Very important. Another golden nugget so that we can protect ourselves to the best of our ability, right? So, Amanda, I know you do a lot of social media marketing for either Powerhouse Smart members or other people and, and helping them improve their online presence. So I'd love it if you tie that into what you have to talk about today. Absolutely. Dan, this is asking me to down, download something right now. Do you think you could just keep yeah. controlling it? I don't want to take too much time off. No problem. No problem. Where would you like me to go? Um, just the behavior section there. 
I was going to talk a little bit about new versus returning visitors and then um, exit pages as well. Okay. So I, from what I understand, Amanda, you, you like the behavior tab for what you do, and you use this quite a bit. I do. Um, I use all of it, but I, you know, definitely um, if you, something great to take a look at is the exit pages because it gives you an idea of if you have accomplished your website goals or not. Um, because basically this is where someone is leaving your site from. So they've gone to your website, they've done some behaviors, they've looked at different things, and this is the last page that they were on before they actually left and went somewhere else. So if your goal is to get some sign-ups for an online call like we've done today, um, you'll see that there's that event. You see PHS Google Analytics um, in your pajamas, and so a whole bunch of people went there and then they left the site, so you've accomplished a goal by um, getting people probably to sign up. Uh, another goal might be to get people to your contact page and fill out a form um, and so that you can get some information from them and reach back out to them. That's a really popular goal for websites is just to get those leads. So you could check here to see if people have gone to that page or not. And this, so this is the last one that they visited um, while they were on your website. So it's a real good one too. Um, take a look at, you know, I, I'll talk to you about landing pages right above the exit pages. And this is kind of the opposite of exit pages. This is really, this is how someone got to your website in the, in, in the first place. So this is the page that they clicked on in order to get, start digging around on your website. So there might have been a link in an email, for example, that Barb sent to us about today. And you'll see that that one's really high in the list. And then you'll see that other event link that Barb probably emailed to us about um, the Valentine's Day Perch event. So th these are the pages that someone would, or these are the links that someone would click on, and this is how they entered your website. So we, we talked about how they left, and we talked about how they entered. So those are two really important uh, links to take a look at that help you understand if you're kind of achieving those business goals. Um, if you had sent out an e-blast or something to someone about a particular event or maybe a blog post that you want people to read or your contact form, this is a great place to take a look at and see if you're accomplishing those goals. Um, there's, there's an awful lot of things that I could talk to you about, about optimizing your website. Um, and making sure that you're, you're achieving those goals and you're getting enough traffic to your website. I'll just name a couple really quick, and then I'm going to go through a couple of social media nuggets to get people to your website. Um, just a couple of the really important things to make sure that your web website is getting enough traffic is to create titles that are uh, descriptive and unique. So those might be headlines on each page in your website. Make sure that they're unique to each other and they're not the same as any other page on your website. And make sure that the content on that page is relevant to whatever that title is. So um, Amanda, uh -huh. Amanda, yeah. can I just ask a question? So those, when you say titles, it's not, yeah. are these the titles that p the viewers see or is this on yeah. the back end? Nope, this is a title that a user can see. Okay, great. So Thank it you. might just be like a headline on your page. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and another um, just kind of a simple uh, tip for making sure that your website is being optimized well is to make sure that the navigation makes sense and it's really easy and uh, usable. Um, it's, it's well thought out and organized so that um, your viewers can go through your site easily and they're not confused. Um, that definitely helps with uh, an actual person going through your website as well as uh, a search uh, crawler or robot. So those are two kind of really important things to think about when you are developing or kind of adjusting your website for better optimization. And I have a couple of social media um, ideas or tips to make sure that you are driving traffic back to your website. So Amanda, um, where would uh -huh. Dan move the cursor to to see where our, if our social media is working for us? Sure. Uh, let's see. Because as you know, no, thought, yep, there we go. 
I'm going to open one on my end, too. There you go. Hold on. Thank you. Because Barb does spend quite a bit of time, guys, members, uh, you know, using social media and also promoting and building awareness for our members in social media. So you'll see a lot of times, you know, if a builder won an award or an interior designer is doing a design house or landscape architects at the Botanic Gardens, then we want to promote that both on our blog and on our social media. Not both, but on our blog and social media. Go ahead. I mean, I'm sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. So for Powerhouse, a lot of these are business to business type members, and um, so LinkedIn makes sense that it would be high on the social media acquisition section. So you'll see that there's 68 um, sessions that came from LinkedIn. So that means that there were 68 people that clicked through from a link that was um, posted on LinkedIn. So you can use your personal profile to send links out to your website, or you can use your company page. And you can use the, um, the blogging tool that LinkedIn has to uh, post out something and then send a link back to your website. I always recommend sending out links um, as well as images so that people are engaged and want to click through to your website and make sure that that is um, you know, really interesting and relevant information that they can use and give them a reason to kind of click back to your website. So that the more links that you have out there, um, heading back to your website, the better. So, so I recommend really, uh -huh. um, Amanda, you gave us a great golden nugget the other day about mm -hmm. um, videos. So I'd love to yep. hear more. Sure. Yes, videos is a great way to get people um, back to your website. Um, I know this specifically for Facebook pages. Um, this is a big one because um, Facebook and YouTube are in competition with each other for video views. In the last six months or so, you'll notice that there's a lot of videos being played on Facebook, and that's because um, Facebook is giving them a higher weight, and they value those more than other posts. Um, obviously, Facebook filters the, the information that you actually see, because you can't actually see all of the content being posted by every friend and every business. It would be, it would be too cluttered. There's just too much. Um, so they filter down the information that you see with the algorithm that they use and they only give you what, what basically that algorithm is saying that you are interested in seeing. So um, the videos are something that can really help push your message across to get, that, get, those, um, get them seen through that algorithm. So um, if you, I have an example of a client of mine that um, we posted a video for them, and their reach was over it actually went up to over 10,000. So it shows me that 10,000 people um, viewed that particular video. So if, if you have, include a link to your website in that post as well, you've got a really good chance to send a lot of people back to your website and get your message across. That's great. Great job, Amanda. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So how, if I'm a, you know, a, a business, how do I get more leads to my website? Basically, you want to make sure that you are spreading your information out across all platforms that you can. Um, you want to you want to get information out there that people want to use, and that one idea might be an ebook. Um, so, if you can get people to a link, you can send out your links through Pinterest, send them out through LinkedIn, Facebook, House, Twitter, and any other social media platform that you want to use. Um, there's a there's an awful lot of places that you can put links out there. Um, and, and get them to, to either download something that they can use or another way to um, get your message across further is to um, create content that's really shareable. You want someone to think that your content is so great that they want to share it with their business associates and their friends. And uh, a tip that I kind of use to um, determine whether something is really shareable or not is if it makes you laugh, cry, say wow, or say aw. So those types of things that create an emotional response are the types of things that people will share. Or obviously, if, um, if there's something that they feel is really highly necessary for their business, they're going to want to share it with their business associates as well. So if you can get something out there that someone wants to share with their business associates and their friends, and you include a link back to your website, 
the more likely um, that you're going to spread that message out and get more links out there back to your website. That's great, Amanda. That's another what I would call really important thing that we're learning today um, is that emotional aspect because it's true. I only share things when I think it's really you know something spectacular or very different or unique. So I love that, and I, I love mm -hmm. the fact that you taught us last week that we should post our videos directly on Facebook as opposed That's to right. from our website. And explain That's that. Right. Maybe. I don't know if you said that. Um, if you have your phone or if you have a professional high-quality video, which I would recommend, um, get that video to your computer and um, compress enough so that you can upload the actual video to the, specifically for Facebook, um, upload that actual video to the platform, not just a link to it. Because Facebook wants to keep you in Facebook. They don't want to send you back out. But you want the actual video um, you want the real video to be played in the platform. And of course we're including the link because that's what we're talking about today is getting links back to your website. But you want the actual video itself, not a link to it, to be played within Facebook. And you were using an example of um, a client who first had it as a link and then you posted right. it directly on Facebook and mm -hmm. what happened? Um, the numbers were way lower for just the link. Um, I don't have that exact number in front. I think that the first number was in the hundreds, and then the second number was in the thousands. Okay. So the, the, the viewing of that actual video is way higher. Fantastic. All right, so real quick here, because we're at 845, maybe um, Dan or Amanda, either way, um, just like I'm you know, bus a busy, busy person, I hardly get to my computer. What are the four or five things I should look at so Dan, what are the, you know, if I only have a few minutes and I want to go to my, uh, my Google Analytics, what do I look at to see what's going on in my business this week? Uh, well, what I would do is, you know, I check it a lot more often than most, um, but the key thing is going to be, pardon me, the key thing would be is get to your dashboard, take a look at this main dashboard, oops. <coughs> And one thing you can do is, right off the bat, this 30-day drop-down here, here area here, is run a comparison just to see how you're going back here. Oops, sorry. And Tell us what you're doing there. What I'm doing is I just put down a, a, a compare to previous period. So what it's going to do is it's going to give me a comparison of the past 30 days and it's going to compare that to the 30 days prior to that. So if I hit apply, it's going to show me how my traffic's doing. Am my traffic up? Is it down? Um, and just kind of look at little metrics there. Um, so is our traffic up or down? Traffic is down, but it's not down significantly. It's only down about 4%, but that's just you know an ebb and flow type of thing. Um, sure. So I'm going to take that away just because that's the main for the overview. The other thing mm -hmm. that I would focus looking at is the, you know, the overview of traffic just to see where people are coming from. Um, and then, personally, I look at the, excuse me, what pages people are looking at. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's pretty much what I look at on a, on a main focus. I don't know, Amanda, how about yourself? How about, um, I think, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Amanda, I think you said something about new versus returning. Yep, that was one of the first things I was going to talk about. So just depending on your business goals, um, I think the new versus returning visitor is really important to look at. Um, for someone that's trying to get new members to their group, uh, namely Powerhouse Smart, uh, you might want to take a look at the new versus returning visitors to see if it's the most of the traffic is, you know, uh, already powerhouse members? Or are you getting a lot of new people coming to the site because you're promoting um, the group in that way? Um, so that would be something really good to look at. Um, and I, I like to look at the, the demographics over uh, you too in the ge geography. I like to see where people are coming to the site from. You know, if we're, if we're sending out a campaign for a client that is specifically for a particular suburb of Chicago, I want to see if um, people are coming into the site. Um, from that to see if see if the offline um, you know media is helping 
the online media. For example, if we sent out a direct mail card to um, advertise a particular event, you know, and there's a what there's a link to the website there, and we want to see if people are researching. Um, you know, we want to see if that particular suburb is is going you know back to the website like we want them to. Okay, so and how about things I would look at? Great. And how about how long they're on the site? Is that important? Yeah, I think it's an important thing, and then depending on what your goals are and where you're sending people to, I think you know the the fact that Powerhouse has such a long um, time span that people stay on the website, I think that's that's very interesting because you know that that means that they're taking some time and reading things, and they're going to different pages, and they're looking around, and they're doing things. So that's that's a good thing to take a look at. You know, if if you look at that uh, metric and you see site for um, 15 seconds, then you, you might need to make some adjustments, add some content that's interesting, um, add some links or buttons to send them somewhere else within the website to dig deeper into the site. There's a lot of things that you can do to improve that. Okay, and Amanda, I know you do a lot of, you know, like you're their inside social media marketing guru, but you're on the outside. Do you use goals? Because you can see that we don't right here. <laughs> I have. Um, I recently did that for um, a client to see if people were clicking on a certain area of the website, um, and basically just go and, and set up particular links you want to see. I know there's probably a lot of different ways of doing that, but um, what I did was added, I wanted to see how many people were actually clicking on particular links within a contact page um, and the contact page itself. Um, and then I was able to see in the last two weeks that 13 people clicked. Um, on that area. So it's, there's a lot of different ways that you can do those goals, but if you want to add in certain links to see who is clicking where and when, um, that's, a, that's a good thing to do for sure. Excellent, excellent. So without um, you know, asking you guys to continue on, and I know there's so much more you could teach us, I'm going to open up to the audience for questions um, because I already know I see a lot of them popping up. So looks like um, Bar. Let's start with Barb. Uh, did you have a question? Looks um, like. Duke. Yeah, go ahead. On the social sites, um, you, Google. You're not very loud. Can you be a little louder? Uh, okay. On the social sites area, Google was not on there. Does the user add all those social sites uh, in the beginning? See, it's not on here. So how are those added by the user? Are you talking about Google Plus, Barb? Yes. We have I think two basically that means that in this particular time frame, that Google Plus didn't send anybody back to the site. There wasn't Unless any. Okay. Right. Unless you click on show rows and there's there's more and they're not showing, this isn't displaying them all. It says one of five, two, five. So the, no, this is all of them. So, um, and during this time frame, Google Plus did not send anyone back to the website. Got it. So, and then I know Nancy, you had a question? I just had a quick question when we were on the other screen and it was showing bounce rate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, here it's showing about 18 percent. The other page, I think it was almost 30 percent. I wondered if you could just explain that a little bit. About bounce rate? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah what Nancy said, Dan, is on one page it shows 44.54 percent bounce rate. This is on this uh, dashboard. And then on the other, it showed a lower bounce rate of 30 percent. That was on the social page. So maybe you can I'm looking at a particular page there. Yes. Okay, but mm -hmm. what does that mean, the bounce rate, and, and how do you impact it if you are a business owner? Right. Dan, you want to add? Right. Well, okay, so, yeah, so bounce rate essentially, as I said earlier, is when, you know, someone engages with that one, only one specific page on the site and leaves, you know, after, after that one page visit. So overall, the 44.54 is for the entire site, but if it's coming from social, that means that the bounce rate was from a social visit. It was lower for, you know, that, that how they how they acquire, or how the site was, or the user was acquired to the site. That's how the bounce rate was lower for that specific area. 
So uh, again, 44.54 bounce rate, Dan, is that good, bad? I mean, obviously the lower the better. Um, it's modest. I mean, it's, you know, it's below 50, so that's good. Um, you know, anything below the 40s is great, but that's, this, is a, this is a decent bounce rate for, you know, for this type of website, for what this type of website's, you know, trying to achieve. Okay, and if you wanted to lower your bounce rate, Amanda, what would you do? I would definitely add a link to, say, read more or click here or learn more here or something like that so that you're kind of asking someone to click through to another page on your website. Got it. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to quickly go through our audience and see if you guys have any questions. Um, Cheryl, any questions from you? No, it's just been very interesting watching what you're doing. Um, these Great. are things that uh, we, had, we had built a new website last year, and um, just getting the time to check these things out is, is something that I should probably try to do more. Right, and whoever built your website, Cheryl, if they hadn't already, you could certainly ask them for free to add Google Analytics and Master Web Tools, and then just play around. I mean, that's, you know, years ago, that's how I, and they have changed, and it continually changes, but um, you could start to figure out what you feel comfortable looking at. Yeah, I know we already have it, and um, I usually let other people look at it and decipher it for me. Okay. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite... Um, quite a lot to, to absorb and look at. Yes, it is. And I think Dan or Amanda, one of you told me that you can set it up to send you an email. Amanda, is that correct? Your Google Analytics can go into your inbox reports? I'm not sure. Yeah, Dan? Can, well, yes, you can. No, you can, you can set it up to send reports on a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a quarterly basis, and you can select what specific criteria you want information sent to you. Um, and it's usually sent via PDF format. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, Dean, do you have anything you'd like to ask? Dean McNamorris, welcome. Thank you. Um, I don't. I'm just pretty much in awe. I know we have it as well. I'm too busy doing other things to focus on it, but I just made notes that I want to get in there and and see how it's working based on what I just heard. So it's pretty pretty phenomenal. Looking forward to reviewing our information. Absolutely. And I was with uh, Joe Barrett last night at Perch with BARP getting ready for the February 12th event, and he was doing an event to CEU, and he sent out an email, and he says he's using his Google Analytics to see who opened it, or actually he's probably using his email server, but he's also using Google Analytics to see how it impacts his website. Um, Kristen, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, I have two questions. Um, how do you figure out which keywords will work for you. I, you know, I can see which keywords people are searching on and, and getting to our website, but how do we add keywords that will get more people to our website? You know, how do we know which ones are, will help? Amanda, you want to address that? Well, I know um, in the uh, Google Webmaster tool, an interesting place to take a look at is um, that Let's see, one, the, actually the fourth column, um, where it says click-through rate, GTR. So if you have a, if you have a, um, if you have a keyword on the left there, and it says 75% actually clicked through to get to your website from that keyword, that tells you that that keyword is in your website, and someone actually clicked that through to your website because of that keyword. So, and then, okay, say so if you see Crawford Plumbing Supply and there's 0% click-through, maybe that needs to, that, that keyword needs to be in there more often or something like that. Um, and there's another way that you can kind of um, determine um, which keywords that you should use. I mean, obviously do, through kind of like a strategy and um, a marketing plan, but there is like Google tool that's a, uh, it's called a Google Keyword Planner, and this, it's not up on the screen right now, but you can, you can search it out, and you can actually research which keywords are being searched by people and which ones are more popular. So, right. for example, if you wanted to see interior design in Palatine, you would be able to go through on that Google Keyword Planner and see how many people actually searched for that term 
And if it said zero, you might want to change up your keyword and decide, okay, that that's, that's not a good keyword. We need to add something else to it. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. And then my other, my other yeah. question is just a real small one. It, you, t you talk about the bots that go through and roam through. And is it good to have a bot be roaming our website? I mean, is that bringing any more traffic, you know, that's important for us? Dan, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I mean, it's not a, necessarily a bad thing. I mean, bots are basically just information crawlers that are using it for whatever specific reason, whether it be to uh, what's known as index the, all the web pages of the website that gets put into a search engine. Um, wow. That, and that's essentially it. You do see a lot of it coming from overseas, too, and that's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just information crawling, you know, for whatever data mining people are doing. It doesn't really have any negative impact per se. I mean, as long as you have a secure site, these bots really pose no threat to your website. Okay, thanks. No Great. And Mark, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, he might be muted. I know he's on. Let me know if you get on, Mark. And then Suzanne? Suzanne, it looks like you might be muted too. Well, Tony wrote a comment here below that says, my mic isn't working, and I want the presenters to know this information is very valuable and appreciated. So, Tony, thank you. That's great. I, I know you, you, uh, you are in charge of the marketing over at Schmettig, and it's important to learn as many new things as possible. So, Mark, real quick, is there anything uh, you want to add? Uh, just a lot of great information. I've got. Uh, I've been kind of following along in my own uh, Google an Analytics for my website, and I can see I need to do a lot more work on that. Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, some great insights on on how to how to start working on that. Thank you. Thank you. And then Suzanne, real quick before we depart, I don't think she's got her mic on. And Nancy, anything else that you would like to mention? I just want to say thank you. I agree. It's very good information and very helpful. Okay, fantastic. Um, Dan and Amanda, thank you so much. Uh, you, you know, you are powerhouse resource pros, which means if any of our members want to um, embark on um, your services, that you offer a discount on their first. Um, uh, you know, engagement with you, and I, I can say personally, I've worked with both of you with clients or with Powerhouse as hiring you as as consultants in marketing, and you're both extremely talented. And I know it was really hard for you to narrow this down <laughs> to a short period of time, but I think those you know dashboard, you know, what do you check? The five things will be invaluable, and I think if people put the, uh, replay this over and over again if they want to hear more they'll be able to really take away some good information so I appreciate your time and, and preparing for today and and being here this morning and uh, thank you very much Dan all right thanks everybody really appreciate everyone for uh, jumping in on this and again like Wendy said we could probably sit here for a couple more hours and do this but this gives you a good overview okay great Amanda Thanks, everybody, for participating, and um, I hope you got some good information today. And if, if you want to contact either of us later, I'm sure that we'd be happy to talk to you more. Okay, thanks, guys, and we'll see you all on February 12th at our next event. Please RSVP for yourself and your guests so Barb has you down. We are going to have to close um, guest count because we don't want the fire department closing down perch that would be a good thing and I am absolutely sure we will meet our max which is 500 very soon so with that everybody have a great day get out of your pajamas go to work if you are not at work yet and we'll talk to you very soon thank you, thank you very much thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.